Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to explain how to convert Btrieve data into SQL data using our .NET application. I'm running now a sample project called Northwind and just to verify that I'm running under Btrieve I'm going to start the profiler, open a program, surf a little bit, and the profiling and I can clearly see here that the application is currently running based on B3 files. Very well. I'm going to close the application. Now, I will open the magic INI now and go to the logical names. Now, in order for the application now to know to which instance and database to uh, convert the data into, we're adding those four logical names here. Okay, the first one is the SQL migration server where the actual server is located. In our case here, it's in my local SQL Express and the database in which we're going to do the migration into. Now, there are two extra logical names, username and password. Now, if you are using Windows authentication like I do, you can leave those empty or just delete them. If you're uh, using SQL authentication, then you should use here username and password. So actually, I'm ready. That's the only thing at the moment I need to add to my INI file. Let's launch the application again. Now, under the developer tools, by the way, in order to see the developer tools, you, sh you need to have access. You need to have the, 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 the rights for that. For more information, I refer you to our website, dev.fireflymigration.com. That's our blog site. And we have a nice article which explains how to use the developer tools and the other menu options uh, above it, the user, the group, the secured name, um, how to get access to those menus. OK, in the developer tools, we can see here that I have three entries related to SQL migration. One is to create a script and monitor and to switch either to Btrieve or SQL. So I'm going to use the first one to create DB script. So when I click on that, the application creates for me, generates for me actually a script uh, based on the information I provided in the INI. As you can see, this is just a comma reminding me where should I run the script. And as you can see here, this is the test database that uh, I uh, wrote in the logical name. I'm going to grab that, copy. I'm going to open MS SQL Studio, query. I'm going to paste that. Okay, now we can see it's a bit more clear here. Um, by the way, the fact that we're using Latin General Bin to create a database is simply because pervasive order is a binary, I'm sorry, the sort actually is binary sort. So we're just using general bin. You're welcome to change it if you like. And I'm going to run the script. Perfect. I've created a database. Let me just refresh the database is here. And you can see down here that I have test Northwind. Now notice that there are no tables, obviously. I've just created the database. Let's go back to the application and open the second menu here, the monitor. Now if I look at the monitor here, it's it's empty, nothing in here. The first button that I will click is the setup. Clicking the setup will scan my retrieve tables and based on their structure will create the tables in MS SQL. And I can also see how many rows I have in each one of the tables. You can see that I have only uh, around 3,000 uh, rows. If I go back now again to MS SQL and refresh the tables here, I can see that those tables were created. Now notice there's an extra table here called migration steps. That table is a reflection, actually the, moni the monitor is a reflection of that table. You can see here all the data similar to the one that we have in the monitor. Okay, let's go back to my, there we go. Okay, so now it's time to run the migration. I'm gonna click run migration and I'm getting that window. That window 
which um, basically tells me how many CPUs I have on my computer. Here, as you can see, I have eight. I can reduce that uh, if I have a uh, if I want to run a, a migration and not to use all the CPUs. Well, you're welcome just to use four or any other number. I'm going to use them all. I'm going to click start the migration, and that's done already. Well, it's quite fast, and I can assure you it's also fast when you have a large amount of data. And we can see here that the total rows so far uh, is equal to the, 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 uh, the row so far is actually to equal to the total rows, which means that all the rows were migrated successfully. I can see here uh, how fast it was. And I can also see each table, how many rows were uh, converted to SQL. Perfect. So actually, I'm done. I'm going to close the monitor. And the last menu entry is a switch to SQL. So I'm going to just click on that. And if you notice, the title here and the status bar both were changed to uh, with SQL DB and the name of my database for me to make sure that I'm running under SQL. And like we did with the pervasive, I'm also going to open the monitor here. I'm sorry, the profiler. And I'm going to run the customers, surf a little bit, and profiling. And now I can see that I'm running with SQL. Definitely, I'm running here with um, SQL database. That's great. Uh, sorry, let's close that. You don't need the profiler. Now, if I'm going to close the application and open it again, I'm in retrieve again. Well, after I migrated to SQL, I would like to open the application already running with SQL. So for that, another entry in the INI under the magic underscore ENV, just add SQL equals Y. This will tell the application to already start with SQL. Opening the app, and there we go. We are running under SQL. That's all, folks. Thanks for watching. If you have uh, any questions, or if you would like to perhaps get some more information, I would like to refer you to uh, our website, our blog, where I mentioned earlier about the article of uh, how to get access to the developer tools menu. Uh, we have a reference website, obviously the YouTube channel with many uh, videos that uh, for many subjects and uh, our user group here uh, migrated by Firefly. You need to sign in for that and you can ask questions. And also if you would like, you can suggest any other videos that you would like us to record for the community. Thank you. See you in our next videos.